A portion of this video is sponsored by Pluggable. On the last episode of Mr. Mobile Stays Home, I reviewed the single most important product that kept me sane during the New York City shelter-in-place order, my Samsung The Frame TV. Now, New York's become a little more relaxed since April, and I've been able to take some day trips to the country to show off phone cameras and eerie radar towers. But let's face it, most of us non-essential folks are still spending most of our time at home. And I've collected a new cluster of products to make that time more productive, hopefully cleaner, and definitely more fun. Let's start by getting cleaner. Ask any junior high biology student and they'll tell you your mobile device is absolutely gross. One study back in 2017 found that some phones carried 10 times more bacteria than a toilet seat. So for the past six years, a company called Phone Soap has offered this simple solution. A small chamber with two lighting elements that blast whatever you stick inside with UVC ultraviolet light. Now that C is important. It's the part of the UV spectrum most damaging to bacterial DNA, and it also happens to be the part of the spectrum the Earth's atmosphere protects us from. So that's why you can't leave your phone out on the rooftop at high noon on a sunny day and expect the same results. Anyway, 10 minutes later, the light turns off and your possessions come out with up to 99.99% of household germs killed, according to phone soap. To me, that sounded a little too good to be true, so I checked out the U.S. National Library of Medicine, whose study on UVC sanitizers found that, whoa, yeah, they do kill bacteria, and they cause enough damage to some viruses that those viruses can no longer reproduce. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yeah, sadly, while that includes the coronaviruses that cause SARS and MERS, according to reporting from both CNN and CNET, lab-grade samples of COVID-19 are hard to come by. Which explains why COVID killer isn't front and center of Phone Soap's website. The company can't make that claim without rigorous testing, which I guess it can't do. Or maybe it just feels like it doesn't need to. Even at between 80 and 120 bucks, Phone Soap devices have been flying off the shelf since March, even without that assurance. And even despite testing by sites like Reviewed.com that indicates some inconsistency in its effectiveness. I have my own complaints, but they're more usability-oriented. I wish it was bigger so I could fit my earbuds cases in there. And, you know, a product that costs this much should probably look and feel a little less plasticky. But it does have thoughtful features like the ability to charge your device while it's disinfecting. And more to the point, given the choice between rubbing down all my pocketables with alcohol every day or just tossing them in the phone soap for 10 minutes, I'll take the phone soap even if I'm not fully sold on its effectiveness when it comes to viruses. Now, with a home as full of tech as this one is, I can never really find enough solutions to charge them. So here's three more, which are pretty interesting. I know chargers are hardly the sexiest thing around, but what I like about the Aoki Omnia line of chargers is that they use gallium nitride technology, aka GAN, which means the bigger one here can kick out the 100 watts of power my MacBook Pro demands while taking up much less space than Apple's MacBook Pro charger. Now, other manufacturers make GAN chargers too. Aoki's just the one that happened to send me these. And there are also 60 watt versions if you want to go even smaller and still have much more power than your phone could ever soak up. Next up, you all know I love my wireless chargers, and I have way too many in the house, so I almost said no when some products, that's S-U-M, offered to send me three of theirs, but I'm really glad I said yes. Uh, this first one, their disc, is just kind of whatever. It's a 9-watt glass and aluminum plate that, in my view, doesn't come close to justifying its $60 price point, even though it does look pretty nice. The dial is where it gets cool. It's even pricier, at 100 bucks, but it does something I haven't seen from almost any other wireless charger. It twists. So your phone can either lie flat or sit at an angle on the silicone rubber base so you can keep an eye on your screen while it charges at 10 watts. It, Sum is also launching a new product called the Drop and Dock that marries a wireless charger with a portable battery so you can take a wireless charger kind of anywhere. I've seen plenty of these before but not in this cool stacked configuration. Yeah, it's minimal, it's clever, and it's live on Kickstarter as this video hits the feed. And I want to get to the fun stuff, so let's wrap up the charging section. We all have that one device we just can't let go of that demands an old charging cable. For me, it's the Bose Soundware I reviewed a few years back and still use literally every day. 
That's where the universal cable from Nomad Goods comes in. It's a USB-C cable at its core, but when I need to charge older tech, I just snap on the micro USB adapter that lives on a small strap near the end. And if I find myself in a car or using a computer with only USB-A ports, well, I've got that adapter at the other end. The whole thing is covered in Kevlar, so it feels like you could pull a truck trailer with it. And at three meters long, I can snake it anywhere it needs to go. 40 bucks, yeah, it's a lot of money. But in this case, it is totally worth it. I know, I'm hardly the only person playing Microsoft Flight Simulator this season. But if the headlines are to be believed, I am one of the few people who managed to get in an order for a hands-on throttle and stick in time to use them with the game. Those controls and the overpowered gaming laptop I'm using to test them after a quick word from the sponsor that's made my work from home battle station possible. This portion of today's video is sponsored by Pluggable, who sent over these three USB devices to bring me out of the basement. You see, normally if I want dual desktops, I have to go down to my office where daylight is meager. Well, Pluggable's docking stations give me all the interfaces I need to bring that setup topside. While my laptop stays juiced up with 60 watt power delivery, I can wirelessly charge my phone, top up my smartwatch, connect two external monitors, and use pretty much any other USB peripheral. This Thunderbolt 3 dock looks sharp enough that you probably won't want to hide it, but if you have a more minimalist aesthetic, their single display USB-C mini docking station mounts to the back of your monitor to keep it out of sight, keep things tidy. As for that portable SSD, well, with two terabytes of storage for the giant video files I'm constantly running to and from the studio and Thunderbolt 3 transfer speeds, it's as good a companion at home as it would be on the road. Hit the link below to check out Pluggable's entire catalog, which is backed by a two-year warranty, US-based customer service, and a commitment to provide better support than any traditional electronics company. Thanks to Pluggable for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now, if you're thinking this setup looks like a better match for Star Wars Squadrons than Microsoft Flight Simulator, congratulations, you know me. Here's the thing, after years of scratching my space combat itch with 90s classics like X-Wing Alliance and equally 90s joysticks from Thrustmaster and Suncom, I finally decided I'd had enough dancing with dongles and ordered a collection of contemporary controls, starting with the Thrustmaster HOTAS Warthog. The Warthog is named after the A-10 attack aircraft whose flight controls it's modeled after, but while I respect the A-10, I'm a Long Island kid who grew up down the road from the Grumman plant that built the F-14, so I've craved a proper Tomcat grip since I saw Top Gun. Well, as it turns out, a company called Verpal Controls out of Lithuania makes a great replica called the VFX, and it's compatible with the Warthog base. And while I was shopping for that, well, of course, I had to catch a glimpse of the Verpal Mongoose Throttle. <laughs> maybe it was the hazard striping, maybe it was the meaty thrust levers, maybe it was the 29 programmable buttons and switches, but I knew I had to have it for my eventual entanglements over Endor. Over the past few weeks, I've used the VFX stick mostly in X-Wing Alliance, which despite its age, still lets you program weapon selection to the stick switch, so you can declare that you're too close for torpedoes, switching to lasers. Now, look, if you're buying this stuff, do more research than I did. I didn't realize that the Thrustmaster base doesn't actually support all the VFX grip's features, like the DLC thumb wheel made to help Tomcat pilots land on carriers or the twist access for rudder inputs. And when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator, that game actually has a default profile for the Warthog, whose added hat switches also make it easier to look around the cockpit and trim the aircraft. Other points in the Warthog's favor include the heavy metal build, cool to the touch every time, and superior ergonomics when compared with the plastic VFX grip. The Mongoose throttle is just as plastic, and frankly, it was a bear to set up, with software that feels like something out of Mech Warrior that took me a couple hours to properly configure. But now that I'm settled in, I love the sheer number of controls I can assign, from landing gear to windshield defrost to the hat switch I use for a rudder input because I haven't yet ordered a pair of pedals. Combined cost for all this stuff is about $950. I know, it was a lot, but hey, it's gonna be a long winter. And finally, all that flying has been done on the latest full-size laptop to hit my review desk, the ROG Zephyrus Duo from Asus. Normally, gaming laptops aren't really my bag, but this is the de facto sequel to the ZenBook Pro Duo I've been using for almost a year. Uh, Duo, of course, because of this addictive second display that sits above the keyboard. 
and the new one corrects one of my key complaints from the ZenBook by mechanically propping that monitor up when the laptop is opened, which reduces glare and goes easier on your neck. The other reason I asked for this test drive? Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 is being called the new crisis because of its extreme system requirements, and the Zephyrus Duo packs one of the most stellar spec sheets you can find in a laptop. But just as important, the twin screens are perfect because Flight Simulator lets you pop out different instruments and dialog boxes that you can then stick down there, keeping your field of view clear for flying. Even with the Core i9 and an NVIDIA 2080 Super graphics card, I can only get acceptable frame rates in the second highest graphics setting. But honestly, being able to fly anywhere in the world from buzzing my old college campus at ODU to flying under the Golden Gate Bridge while completely covered in Carl the Fog and seeing those places rendered in satellite detail, it's exactly what I'm gonna need when the mercury drops and it comes time to fight off the next round of cabin fever. A full review of this machine is coming soon and uh, I have a feeling I'm gonna have a great time evaluating it. Folks, if you'd like to buy any of the products featured in this video, the links in the description will help you out. Now, those are affiliate links, so my parent company may make a commission if you do make a purchase, but that has nothing to do with me. My product selections and opinions regarding them are my own. Also, aside from the sponsor Pluggable, no company paid a fee for inclusion in this video, and I don't offer copy approval or an early preview to any company whose products I cover. They see this video at the same time you do. Please subscribe to see more videos like this and check out my other series playlists at The Mr. Mobile on YouTube. Till next time, thanks for watching, and if you can't stay home, then at least stay safe and remember to wear a mask while you stay mobile, my friends.